Hey, this is Wes. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can use a substance painter to create texture variations. Now, oftentimes when texturing an asset, we need to create different color variations. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use anchor points to link layers together and help to automate this process. Here in Painter, I have a system I created using anchor points. I can simply drag in a textured pattern and it updates parts of the watch to match my color scheme and it makes creating variations for this watch a snap. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at how we can build this step by step. So I'm going to start by just turning off these layers and let's just build this from scratch. First thing I need to do is I need to create the color layer. Now before I get started, I'm using this plastic faked leather smart material and a base material that I'm getting from Substance 3D Assets. And that is what's giving me my main uh, material surface attributes, like uh, it's handling my, my roughness, the normal, and so on. And so those attributes are then kind of moving up my layer stack. And what I'm doing here in this case with these patterns is I'm just going to be working with color information. So let's build this guy from scratch. We're going to start by creating a fill layer. And this is going to be my base pattern. So let's call this pattern. And like I said, I'm only interested in the color value. So here, if I hold down the Alt key and click on my color channel, it will disable all the other channels, and now I have just my base color. Let's start with this blue pattern. So I'm going to drag and drop and just place this here on the button, and that's essentially applying this texture map to the 3D model. Now, if I look at my properties, you can see I'm using the UV projection, tiling, and the UV wrap, most importantly here, is set to repeat. Let's jump over to my 3D 2D split view, and here you can see the UVs for the particular watch. This here is my body. This is the body material set, and here's all the UVs. Now, what I want to do here is uh, just make a quick transformation. So I'm just going to grab the transform widget and just drag it over here, and it's repeating because, again, the UV wrap is set to repeat exactly what I want. And now I can just reposition this cursor, uh, I'm sorry, this transform. So let's get it maybe positioned something like that. That looks pretty cool. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, that's all I need to do. So my camera project, or excuse me, my texture projection is set up here under UV uh, projection for the map. All right, let's jump back to our 3D view and that takes care of the pattern. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this pattern throughout the layer stack. So this is where the anchor points start to come into play. So I want to right click on the layer and I'm going to choose to add an anchor point. Now an anchor point is essentially just a pin in the layer stack. And whatever layer you pin or anchor in this case, any of the channel information that you have associated with that layer is you can then reference that somewhere else in the layer stack. Now in my particular case, I'm only using color information. So what this anchor or pin is saying is, hey, I want to be able to use this color value that's in this base color channel, and I want to reference that somewhere else in the layer stack. So let's get to that now. So for this watch design asset, I wanted to have this color pattern for texture of the outside of the band, and then I wanted to have like a uniform color that matches that pattern on the inside with a procedural kind of texture inside this as well, like some type of procedural pattern. So we're going to basically have two texture maps that are going to represent the inside of the watch band. And because of that, it's easier to handle any of my masking just once inside of a folder. So that's why I'm going to come over here to my layer stack and create a folder. And we're going to call this watch inside, or here, let's do this band inside. It makes more sense. And with this layer group, or excuse me, with this folder selected, we're going to create a fill layer. And I'm just going to call this color. And then I'm going to disable all the channels. I only care about color. Alt, left click on the color channel, and now I have my color. So first thing I want to do uh, is go ahead and mask this. So with the layer, with the folder selected, I can grab a black mask. Let's create a paint effect and then jump over to my uh, tools and I'm going to grab just the polygon fill tool and the polygon fill tool is going to be selected or it's going to be set to this UV fill mode and I have this set to a value of white. So again, if we take a look at my 3D, uh, 2D split view, you can see that the way that the UVs are laid out, I, I perfectly have these UV shells that are separating the outside of the band and the inside of the band. So in this case, the polygon uh, fill tool is going to work great. So let's jump out to my 3D view, and then all I need to do is just left click here on the UV shell for the inside on one side, and we'll click the other. I also have uh, this little inside part 
I just want this to be a solid color as well. So let me go ahead and just quickly click to select or fill these UV shells with this white value for my mask. And we've got one more inside here. And there we go. Boom, we got it. All right, so here's my mask. Alt, left click on the mask. You can see that's what we just generated. All right, perfect. We have the mask. Everything's in place. Now we just got to get to the color. So here's what here's one way you could work, right? So we have the pattern. We've applied the texture. I have the the uh, the fill layer. I could grab the eyedrop tool, hold down shift so that I'm selecting just from the base color channel and simply just select a color value from the texture map itself. That's a that's a quick, easy way to work. The texturing part of the color is done. However, what happens is let's say that I want to go back to the pattern. And of course, I grab just a different one of these patterns and I drag it in. OK, so now I've got I have this issue where, OK, I need to go back to the color. Let's grab the eyedropper. Let's hold down shift. Let's select a color value. OK, now I'm back in business. Oh, wait, I need to change it again. This time it's going to be green. And then I got to go through the whole process all over again. So that's a pain. We don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do, let's go back to that color, uh, that blue, and let's take a look at how we can set this up a little bit more procedurally and leveraging our anchor data that I've already pinned here. So what I'm going to do is jump over here to the color value. And instead of setting this color manually, I'm going to click the base color input, jump over to my anchor points tab, and here is my anchor point that's ready for me to use. So I named this one pattern. That's what we're going to use. So essentially what we've done, if we take a look, at the anchor point itself, we are just referencing that base color texture pattern. And as I had mentioned earlier, you can think of the anchor as a pin. And it's a pin for a layer, which allows us to reference any of the channel information that's part of that layer. So we can grab any of that channel information. In our case, we're using just the base color. And that is how we're able to link to that base color texture pattern that we're using. So at this point, it's not really helping me because I just have the pattern repeated on the inside of the band, not what I want. I want to have some type of averaged color of all these colors that make up that pattern. I want that averaged color value to be what's used here on the inside of the band. So now I'm going to show you a trick on how we can do that. So with the layer selected, what I'm going to do is come over here to my effects and I'm going to add a new filter. And for the filter, I'm going to grab my transform. So you can just do a quick search for transform, and you, we have this transform filter. So I'll select the transform filter. And of course, there's several properties. Here we have this scaling property. And here's where the trick comes into play. I'm going to take the scaling. I'm going to scale this way down. So watch. As I start to move this towards the left, we're scaling it down. We start to repeat the texture, and we're going to scale it all the way down to 1. So we're doing this like super repeat, but we're scaling the texture way down to a value of 1%. And then I want to take that result and scale it down to 1% again. So to do that really quickly, I can just right click and choose to duplicate the effect or hit control D. So just duplicate the effect. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the two transform operations together is going to give me this result that I want of averaging the colors. So we're scaling it down to 1% and then we're taking that result and scaling it back down to 1% again. If you're familiar with MIP mapping, this is uh, basically the same technique. So we're scaling it down, and then we can scale it back up. And that has the effect of just averaging all these colors together. And so now with our anchor system set, we can start to just change out the base pattern input to get different values. And now you can see that the pattern and the inside color, which is that average color of the pattern, gives me these different looks. Let's grab a different version. So again, this gives me a quick way to set a color value based on a single input of a texture rather than having to constantly sample values from the texture map every time I want to make a change. OK, so let's go back to that blue. This is what I want to work with first. Now, part one is done. We have the color value, which is here. The next thing I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of a of pattern value in here. So what we're going to do in this particular case is I could just duplicate the layer. But I already have this blue value, and I really just need to lighten it based on some type of procedural pattern. So here's another trick that we're going to use. I'm going to create a fill, and we're going to call this pattern. And I'm going to turn off all of the channels. So now we just have this fill that's not really doing anything. 
But again, for the base color channel, that's all that I'm really concerned about in this particular technique is that I want to set the blending mode from normal to pass through. And pass through is a very special mode. It's basically passing data up from below up through to the layer. So as soon as I enable pass through, you can see that the layers below it, which is this color, is just gonna be passed up through to this pattern layer. So now I'm getting this color value essentially for free. A quick note about setting the blending mode. Each channel in a layer has its own set of blending modes and opacity settings. Use this drop-down menu at the top of the layer stack to switch between the blending mode setting for each channel. In this case, the base color is selected and this indicates that I have set the blending mode for the base color channel to pass through. Now what I want to do on this particular layer is add a new filter. So here we're going to add a filter. And this time for the filter, I'm going to grab my HSL. And then I'm going to come over to the lightness value and just brighten up this texture slightly. So something like that. Now I need to mask this layer. So with the layer selected, we'll create a black mask. Let's add a fill. And now for the fill, I just need to find some type of noise. And I want to use this dots. So here in the resources, if I do a quick search here for dots, we have this procedural hexagon dots texture. This is gonna work great. So let me just select this guy. And then I can come over to the properties and I can tile and work with the UV transformations of it. But in my case, there's some procedural parameters and I'm just gonna increase the tiling. So I'm getting this here. And then I can keep playing with this even more. Like for example, there is a border width. We can do something like this. So I think I'm just gonna grab, uh, maybe do, I'll just set this to around 6.5, I think that's going to, or 0.65. So now I have this little geometric pattern, and it's based on the color that's being passed up through below it, which is an average of my normal base color that's coming from the texture. And here, I'm just using an HSL, and I'm adjusting the lightness just to lighten the value just a little bit. Okay, so now with all that in place, we've got three layers that is representing all the color values here on the watch band. Now, if we jump back and we grab, say, a totally different color, like, say, this green, and we drag it in, everything updates. If we grab a different color value, drag it in, everything updates. So this is now creating this kind of procedural system here for my texture and allows me to generate variations here for this watch really, really quickly. And that is going to take care of all the texturing that I did for the watch band itself. Now the next part of this that is a little bit more tricky, but you'll see it's actually quite simple to solve, is we now want to use this same averaged color value for the watch face itself. However, the tricky part here is the watch face, this LED, is on a different texture set. So what do we do now? We do have a limitation in Substance Painter where you cannot instance a layer that is referencing an anchor point. Now you can instance a layer that has an anchor point. And uh, that's too bad, that's a, that's a limitation. But I'm gonna show you another tip that's a workaround uh, to get around that limitation. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's jump back over here to our body. And like I said, you can take a layer, any layer, and you can right click, and there's an option to instantiate this layer across texture sets. So when you do this, let's just click the layer, uh, let's click the option. You can see that it's saying, okay, well, what texture sets you want to work with? Uh, there's body, there's glass. You, it's giving me this little warning for this texture set because there's a channel's mismatch, meaning that for glass, there's actual transparency and the body or the LED, this body, which is the source that I'm trying to instantiate from, it doesn't have... Uh, the transparency as a channel. So it's not a big deal, but it's just letting me know that's what that is. So you can see here that I can say, hey, I want to take this texture from the body, the source, and I want to basically create a reference of this layer to the LED. The LED, this is the texture set that I want to work with. I'm going to click OK. So now that has been instantiated, basically copied over to the LED screen, the LED texture set and it's reference, and that's what this little button here means. So it's display the reference properties. It's saying, hey, there is a layer that's on the body, and the layer is pattern, and it's being instanced over to the LED, and the name of that layer is pattern instance. Notice that I can click this little instance hierarchy view to quickly navigate my texture sets. 
So let's take a look at what this layer is. You can see I've done this over in this section. So I'm just going to delete these two layers so we don't get confused. And here is this pattern instance. I'm going to drag this down below so it's below all the other layers on top. And now we essentially have this reference layer. Now we're in the same boat that we were earlier with the inside of the watch band. Yes, it copied over, it instanced over to the new set, the new texture set for LED, uh, but it's, it's the actual color pattern. I don't want that. I just want this uniform color value. So here's where we do run into a few issues. I can't right click and do much with this instance layer. So for example, all of my options, like I can't add filters to this, I can't add levels. Most importantly, I can't anchor any of this data. So it seems pretty limited. However, a really quick workaround for this is to simply just use that pass through trick once again. Think about this instance layer as just like the kind of like a portal. It's like the door, like the, the data's come over and now we just need to find a way to start using it. So to do that, I always create like a fill layer and we'll just call this color and I'm going to use that pass through trick. So once again, I'm just gonna disable all the channels and my base color channel is selected. I'm gonna set the blending mode to pass through. And so now that essentially gives me this pass through color. Now with this layer, it's just a standard layer in Painter, it's not instanced, I could do whatever I need to with this. So for example, we wanna create an average color value and we know how to do that now, which is to add a filter. We're going to grab a transform. So let's start to search for transform. We're gonna scale it all the way down. Then we are going to just hit Control D to duplicate it and there we go. And now we have that uniform color value that's coming from that pattern instance. And so by using this fill layer with the pass-through technique, this is a workaround for me not being able to apply anchors or, or any type of you know effects or anything like that to this layer. So for example, if I wanted to say, hey, every time I, I, I work with this, I want to you know, change the color or do something else with it. Here's, here's again where I could now add a filter if I wanted to. And I could, if we grab the HSL, and here we could maybe, you know, darken it. So decrease the lightness down. Maybe I'll do that just, just for the heck of it, just to see how it works. So we'll set this to like 0.43, and here we go. So now we have just like a slightly dark variation to that. And then I have my watch faces on top. So now I can do all these watch faces here. So now let's jump back to the body and look at everything coming together uh, with just updating the textures. So here I have all these other layers that I wasn't using. Let's just delete these guys, it's kind of getting in the way. Let's jump back to pattern and let's grab a completely different pattern. So let's go, let's go with this one here, drag and drop, place it in. So I'm changing one thing, one fill layer, one texture input, and boom, everything updates for me. Let's do it again, uh, different pattern altogether. Now we get just a complete different variation. So this technique came in handy on a recent project where I had to create a bunch of different variations of these watches and I had to do so pretty quickly. So here you can see an example of how I was able to put this into play for a project where I needed a bunch of variations of these watches. Okay, so that's gonna close out this tutorial. So the big takeaway is that uh, an anchor point is just a pin and we can use that to quickly link or reference different pieces of channel information from one layer to the next. Also using pass-through mode works really well if we need to copy some information and pass that up through to a layer. Pass-through also works really well when we need to instantiate some information from one texture set to the next and then we want to be able to maybe apply effects or do some more work on top of that linked and pass-through would kind of help us do that. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.